So you want to be a good engineer. But how good do you want to be? According to this book, that's the question you need to ask to become whoever you want to be. And if you want to be the best engineer in the world, who better to ask than the world's top advertising guru, Paul Arden. But all jokes aside, I want to have a look through this book together with you, written by Paul the Guru. Hey and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a German mechanic engineer based in Sweden. Today I'm gonna react to this world's best-selling book that claims to be invaluable for everyone who aspires to succeed and for which I paid 9 euros and 95 cents. And let's see if it's any good for engineers like us. I really hope you're an engineer too, otherwise that was awkward. I mean, everyone's a little bit of an engineer, right? Right? Anyway, let's get into it. So let's go through the book together and see what we think. It does have 127 pages, so I'm not going to talk about every single one, but just the ones I care about. But for you to get a bit of an impression, so the book has a lot of pictures and large text. It's not like a regular style book, which is why I can be bothered to read it. Okay, I'm opening the book. Yeah, first problem, the table of contents. Look, so the book is divided into eight sections, which is nice, and they each have their own little title like this, except for the first section, it does not have a title. This is the kind of inconsistency that drives me up the walls. Bye. So we're off to a bad start already, but let's keep going. Okay, so this section is actually interesting. It says, do not seek praise, seek criticism. And this section talks about how it is much easier to get approval from other people than criticism, which actually helps us grow and move forward. And two strategies that the book suggests to get this criticism feedback from other people is to ask the right people, so the people that you know are going to be honest, and to ask the right questions. The questions that you can ask are what's wrong with it, how can I make it better, and can you find fault with this? So the premise of these questions already assumes that there is something wrong that the other person can find. And I think this is useful advice, although it really depends on what situation you're in. If you're a complete beginner engineer, you do not need to know everything that's wrong with what you're doing. <laughs> you need to be encouraged and you need to know what you can do to take it to the next level, to improve it by the next 1%. If someone was to tell you everything that's wrong with what you did, you will not be able to implement all of that because it's just too much. You cannot focus on everything at once. So I think if you know the criticism is going to stop you from trying again, don't go out of your way to get it. But if you know you're at a point where you can actually take this criticism and implement it, then please do. So take this with a grain of salt, but I think it's actually pretty good advice for engineers. Okay, on the next page it says, it's all my fault. Isn't that charming? It's all my fault. Yeah, get ready for a bit of feedback, Paul. Okay, I have a huge problem with this page. It says, if you're involved in something that goes wrong, never blame others, blame no one but yourself. If you have touched something, accept total responsibility for that piece of work. If you accept responsibility, you are in a position to do something about it. And I think this is kind of a, how do you say, a knife with two blades. Uh, I will put the correct saying on the screen. There are things we don't have control over and I think it's really harmful to blame ourselves for them anyway. What is that gonna bring you? How I would reward this is in everything that goes wrong, you can look for the things that you contributed to them going wrong and you can think about how you can improve next time. But like there's no use in using words like fault and blame. Responsibility, yeah, you can take responsibility for something but don't blame yourself, don't take all the fault for something and beat yourself up. Don't dwell on mistakes that you made and identify things that were out of your control that made something go wrong because these things exist. And it's just not going to help you to beat yourself up about them. I don't live for that kind of energy. That's my take on that, Paul. Now the next one I actually love, damn, this is a roller coaster. It says, do not covet your ideas. Give away everything you know and more will come back to you. And I absolutely love this. I think this is so important as engineers, but also any other profession. So it says, at work, people are secretive with ideas. Don't tell them that, they'll take the credit for it. The problem with hoarding is that you end up living off your reserves. Eventually you'll become stale. If you give away everything you have, you're left with nothing. This forces you to look, to be aware, to replenish. 
somehow the more you give away the more comes back to you i absolutely love this because this is actually one of the first lessons i was taught in university when i started my bachelor in mechanical engineering they told us that we need to work together we cannot see our classmates as competitors we need to see them as our teammates and i think the same has to be true at work you have to see your colleagues as your teammates and help each other out and contribute ideas to each other, riff off of each other's ideas and combine them into something greater. It is not possible to do it alone and a single idea is not gonna go nearly as far as combining all the ideas is. And actually in business school I was taught something similar to never be afraid of sharing my ideas with others because there's a much higher risk that my ideas actually kind of shit and that I never get feedback on that than that the idea is genius and someone else is going to uh, and someone else is going to steal that and be really successful. An idea by itself is not that valuable, only when you execute it, execute it in the right way and refine it with feedback from other people and implement more and more things into it, that's when it becomes valuable. So yes, I totally agree. Be generous with your ideas in engineering or business or wherever else and this will bring you much further than being secretive about them will. And I actually found another section of the book that is kind of related to this. When it can't be done, do it. If you don't do it, it doesn't exist. And this text talks about how if you have a really new idea, it might be really innovative or silly, who knows? You're probably not going to get funding for it, support for it. And if you really believe in that idea, then you need to find a way to execute it anyway so that you can show the value that it actually brings. An example given in this text is that someone wants to make a movie and they don't have the funds, they don't get the funds to make it, but they ask other people to film little scenes for them and kind of scrap their way to making a third of the movie. So at that point other people can see the idea come to life and actually believe in it and want to fund it. And I think something similar is true in engineering. You can sometimes have a really wild idea and you're not gonna get much support for it, but if you make a prototype or some way of showing it in action, that's going to be so much more convincing. Or it can show you that, yeah, this actually kind of sucks and I should not pursue that idea. But either way, just build it, just make it, is the fastest way, the best way to figuring out if something is worth pursuing or not and to get other people's support on it. And this is also actually related to another section which, which says the person who doesn't make mistakes is unlikely to make anything. So here it talks about Thomas Edison who said of the 200 light bulbs that didn't work every failure told me something that I was able to incorporate into the next attempt and it says to have a positive attitude to mistakes since failure is a major contributor to success. And I also really agree with this one. I would not want to work at a company where failure is considered a bad thing. Where you are not allowed to fail. You're not going to do great engineering in that environment. You're not going to be innovative anyway. You can do like incremental innovation where you improve something a little bit more, but you're never going to have a radical innovation come out of a company where you are not allowed to make mistakes, otherwise you get fired. <laughs> You have to experiment as an engineer. So I really love this part of the book. And I think it's so important to tell ourselves constantly, failure is a good thing. It means I tried and I found one way that didn't work. So now I can move on to the next way that could work or not. Okay, let's talk about this one next. Accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. Uh, I mean, that sounds pretty nice, right? Find out what's right about your product or service and then dramatize it like a cartoonist exaggerates an action. Yeah, that sounds a whole lot like advertising. So this is one side, accentuate the positive. Sounds pretty nice, right? But actually this is terrible for engineering. We do not want to have optimistic engineers. Why? Because then we would be called architects. Someone needs to make sure that things are safe and don't come crashing down just because two people decided to jump at the same time. We need to be pessimistic. We need to add safety margins to everything. everything. Now you can be optimistic in your ideas don't shit on your ideas. In the brainstorming ideation phase, you want to be optimistic. You want to say, yes, that's a great idea. Let's see where it can take it. And then afterwards you have to go, actually, that's not going to work because you have to be the party pooper as an engineer. And that's a good thing. You have to question everything. You have to say, I don't think it's going to work. How's that going to work? Explain to me. You have to push other people to 
convince you that it's going to work. Otherwise you have to say no, no, no. So yeah, don't accentuate the positive. Don't overestimate what your design can do and be pessimistic. <laughs> But I like the other one, eliminate the negative, which says avoid knocking the competition. It usually serves to publicize them rather than you. It may win attention, it may win awards, but the likelihood is that it won't win sales. It's also much easier to do. I agree that for engineering, bashing other engineers, other engineering teams or other companies in engineering doesn't do you any good. You can see what you can learn from them or see what you want to do better than them, but it's not going to make you a better engineer if you look down on others. Instead, see what you can learn from them. Here's one more idea that I really like from the book. It says, rough layouts sell the idea better than polished ones. If you show a client a highly polished computer layout, he will probably reject it. There's either too much to worry about or not enough to worry about. There's nothing for him to do. It's not his work, it's your work. He doesn't feel involved. It is very difficult for him to imagine anything else if what you show him has such detail. Show the client a scribble. Explain to him, talk him through it, let him use his imagination. Work with him rather than confronting him with your idea. I think this is so applicable to engineering because you're constantly coming up with ideas or designs that you want other people to jump on board with and support them like they're their own. I find it super interesting. In my work I'm usually the client actually because I purchase equipment but I would agree that if a supplier shows me a complete concept where there's nothing to discuss with them anymore then I would not feel as involved as if they show me first a rough idea of how everything could look like and then wait for my feedback on that part and then implement it to make it more detailed. I think being involved like that really makes you a lot more convinced that something is going to work. It makes the customer feel like they created it with you and they understand every single decision that was made. This is something we engineers can learn from advertisers. <laughs> to be more customer focused and involve them in the design process. All right, that was a roller coaster. Moral of the book, advertising advice is actually kind of relevant to engineering but sometimes not. Well, check out my video on why I love engineering and you might too next and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.